Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.90 Beta. In this episode we are going to attempt to rescue a Kerbal. So here is Orson Kerman who is uh, going to be in orbit somewhere. We're going to have to check out where he's in orbit because that will determine our launch site. Because if he's on the equator I'm not going to try and launch from Cape Canaveral. We don't have that kind of margin on our rocket right now. So we need to launch relatively close to his inclination. And so, yep, uh, we get an advance. Failure is not too pricey, considering the advance, uh, though we will take that reputation hit. But, uh, yep, this is going to be a tough one. It's especially tough because I'm not entirely sure. I think Orson Kerman will possibly run out of uh, oxygen, food, you know, all the supplies if he's up there because of TAC life support. So I don't know how long we have to actually get to our little Kerbal there. And that is a question that I hope we don't answer the wrong way. All right, but I'm going to accept the contract and we're going to try this out. So rescuing a Kerbal. So where is Orson Kerman? Orson Kerman is, I, as I expected, uh, relatively equatorial here. Um, that's sort of a problem, isn't it? Delta V wise, that's quite a hefty thing for us to try and meet. Obviously, I'm going to go with the the launch site that is closest to that, which is the European Union's. Oh, there, there we go, French. Yes. Okay, so we're going to be launching from here, and that's pretty bad since our rocket the last time was short of orbit in the first place. So I fixed the Separatron problem and that was thanks to input from uh, people in the comments who mentioned, multiple people mentioned that it was uh, Venn's uh, stock revamp that was adding effects to the to the Separatrons and that's not good because uh, Realism Overhaul itself also I think adds, adds, adds effects to them and so the two were conflicting and that's what caused the uh, effects to display even when the when the little separatrons were not lit and so I just deleted that section out from Venn's stock revamp and that's how I fixed it. Uh, the, stock, uh, the stock revamp also has these let me see if I can find, uh, these uh, snub-nosed versions of the separatrons and so I kept those in so they're, uh, that section I just left in as is. Um, Alright so this is a little bit complicated because I didn't know where our Kerbal, I suspected it would be equatorial, but I didn't know for sure. It might take two launches of this to get to get to Orson. Um, I have decided to, th this stage is no longer necessary for orbit, that's by intention. So this is just going to be our rendezvous engine. And so instead of having four little one kilonewton thrusters, I have just the one. Again, I uh, configured the hydrazine and... Uh, Okay, I think tech level 2 is the best we can do. Um, though it uh, changed my burn time on me, so that's interesting. I wanted 18 minutes and 15 seconds. There we go. Alright, uh, we've got hydrazine thrusters here. And for the first time, we're going to be having a mix of thrusters. We've got HTP on the pod. Now, in old versions of Realism Overhaul, this caused a problem. Uh, at least, uh, I mean, I'm thinking way back to 0.2, 3.5, and 0.24. So at that point, uh, having mixed thrusters uh, did cause me some problems. Uh, but I've, I've t tried it out uh, off to the side, just on a pad test, and it looks like we can, we can do this with the HTP and the hydrazine. Uh, note that this tank utilization is only 50% and that's to save mass, otherwise the rest of the launcher is overburdened. Okay, I am assuming here that the the combination of this avionics package and this avionics package is additive. In other words, we've got a capacity of 8 tons with this one and we've got a capacity of where are you? 120 tons with this one. So I assume that my combined capacity is 128 tons. Uh, I'm also assuming here that the 5 tons that this pod has as its capacity is only accessible if there's a Kerbal inside because it's minimum crew to operate, right? So I'm assuming that that's not accessible to me at launch. Eventually it will be once we get a Kerbal in there. 
so that's the tricky thing so the maximum size for uh, this top portion would be eight tons and it's way below that uh, it's possible that I should I hope I'm connecting that to the right node I should probably put struts here this doesn't look like the most stable sort of thing I think I will better safe than sorry right okay so yeah uh, maybe I should shift this guidance unit down because this unit has more than enough to handle everything up here and I'll save this mass how much does it uh, weigh? 0.4 tons, right? So we don't need to be carrying that 0.4 tons here. We'll carry it here. And that'll give us greater efficiency. Okay, right. So that improves things somewhat. Uh, so the burn times are uh, 2 minutes for the boosters, and then a further 4 minutes and 30 seconds for the center engine, the LR-105 sustainer. And so 6 minutes and 30 seconds total for the LR-105. And then we move on to the, the second stage, if you will, which is added in from our last test because, of course, we didn't have enough Delta V last time. And I've added in the AJ-10, and I gave it the, the highest thrust version that we could get at extra cost, of course. So, yes, uh, we've got that AJ-10 there. And then, of course, the one kilonewton thruster for orbital maneuvers. So, that is the way it all works. It's 10 minutes and 30 seconds into orbit, which is pretty long. So, we're going to need the full 9,500 meters per second estimate for the Delta V. If we could get to orbit quicker, we would need less. So, that's the trick. You'll notice I did reshape the boosters. Uh, to make it look a little bit better. Not quite the sort of skirt that the actual Atlas had, but hey, close enough. Uh, <laughs> at least it looks a little bit better. Um, the separatrons uh, keep popping out and ending up in, uh, you can see, we've got one that is tucked in properly here the way I want it to be, and then one that has popped out. I don't know why they keep popping out when I do the re uh, offset, but here we go. Let's try this again. And these keep going higher than I want them to be. I don't want to offset them. I actually want them to be down. Nope, nope, come on. Down here. Okay, so I've got other worries. This is not the limit of my concerns here. Obviously, we've got the Delta V thing. I don't think 661 meters per second is going to be enough to help us rendezvous with, the, with uh, our Kerbal. So that's a problem. There's also a matter of timing, because if the Kerbal's gonna run out of oxygen, that uh, this burn time probably will require multiple uh, burns in order to match inclination, and that means multiple orbits. And that's not such a good thing, if he's running out of oxygen. But we'll have to try it out like this, I think. I, I don't know how much I can tweak it. Uh, we can add more engines, of course, but then that's going to cut down the Delta V, which is our other problem, because we don't know if we have enough Delta V to rendezvous. We do have a 128 ton limit on this rocket, and so there's, uh, there isn't too much more I can do to make it larger and add Delta V, um, especially since our burn times are already quite long. Alright, well, that's a thing. And then there's also the nose cones. I remember the nose cones blew up last time. So what do I do about that? Now, I have to make a point. This procedural liquid tank cone, which would probably also blow up, um, says it's RP0 yes, but it's actually RP0 no. It uh, has liquid fuel and oxidizer, so it's not configured for real fuels. So that is not an option. So we've got these aerodynamic nose cones, but they blow up. Um, we've got other nose cones, but they're the wrong size. Will they work with... So this is 800. See, max temperature 800. This is 1250. We've gone through this before, I remember, for something else. But these are like this. Can we resize? Okay, we can tweak scale. But will they survive? That's the question. Okay, well, we'll try it. Better than them blowing up. 
I guess while we're at it, we can load them up with kerosene and liquid oxygen. Gives us an extra second. Is that worthwhile at all? It's because it's 11 delta V. Okay. And if that's the way it is, I'll, I'll extend this tank a little bit too. Let's go to 205 on the burn time there. Obviously haven't optimized this yet. Uh, I mean, running the numbers and all. Okay. Well, uh, there's, there's an attempt for you. And we will try this out. Vimes? Oh yes, the name. Of course, I'm naming it after a character from Terry Pratchett's Discworld series, and Sam Vimes is uh, certainly my favorite character in the series. <laughs> uh, certainly. Uh, so uh, definitely appropriate to name this first, uh, first attempt at orbital flight after Sam Vimes. Okay. I'll leave it at that, and let's try this out. Let's uh, let's see if we can rendezvous with the Kerbal lost in space. Oh wait, Jeb snuck in. Uh, let's uh, hold on. Let's let's recover this. Okay, and while I'm here, I think I'm gonna slap an extra antenna on the top. Okay, there we go. And no Jeb. All right, let's go. Okay, so here we are. SAS on, throttle up. Now for the for the Kerbal, if we we're gonna launch a Kerbal from the ground, we probably don't need this top avionics package. That's only there because we're we're going to be rendezvousing with a Kerbal. All right, we don't have any way to replenish electric charge right now, but I think the pod has more than enough for this mission. Hopefully. Now, where is our Kerbal? There he is, set as target. 5.4, jeez. That's a lot. I don't think we're going to be doing that very easily. Uh, let's, let's wait until he's a little bit uh, closer overhead. Make the rendezvous a little bit easier. We don't have a whole lot of tracking stations to take advantage of here. Maybe actually waiting for the Pusan 3. That's a pretty high altitude, isn't it? He's, uh, he's a thousand kilometers up. That's another thing that's going to be trouble. But yeah, I'm going to wait until the Pusan 3 is over. Okay, well, this is a good configuration. Yep, I think this will help us with communication. Alright. So we're still all fueled up. Throttle up. SAS on. And yep, lights and go, go. Why is our total delta V less than I thought it was? I said ten thousand, right? Uh, yeah, ten thousand. Anyway. Oh, right. Okay, so far so good. The main problem will be when we're going through the region of heating, 30 to 40 kilometers, and we have to see whether those protective nose cones do their job. Ah, nice clouds out this time. Very nice. Oh, not 75, 65. Now, I recall setting the parachute for pressure, but I need to double check that. Uh, pre deployment pressure, 0.3 atmospheres, so we've got that going for us. So, even if we can't get to the Kerbal, we can do a test with the pod to see if it can re enter properly. Also a bit worried about whether the parachute at the top A will survive the heating and B will not rip this all apart and just bring me uh oh. Oh those decouplers, yeah. And just bring me the avionics package. That's uh issue. It's gotta stay attached to the pod. 
Okay, once again, it's not showing me the proper stage time, so let's see. I think, uh, oh, it's the bottom tank, right. Well, let's go to 30 degrees here. Actually, 32 would be better. Okay. Ooh, ow, ooh. I've got those separatrons that are a little bit too energetic. I'm gonna have to turn down the throttle on them. Okay, well anyway, we're, we didn't have any nose cone blow-ups, and so that's a good thing. Probably maybe 33 would be better right now, judging from where our prograde vector is. Maybe we can hold off doing the final burn until we like cross the equator or something. I don't think we're gonna get that far. But it'd be really handy if we could do some of the inclination adjustment with the third stage. With the not well, with the AJ ten stage I'll say. With if we count this as the first stage, it's the second stage. Then again at well, it'll depend on communication as well. But Considering we're only going to be going at about 5,700, 5,600 meters per second on the surface velocity by the end of this stage, I don't think we're going to have that much opportunity. Speaking of which, I better pay attention to... We've got 2,000 on that stage, so we've got right now about 300 meters per second worth of ability to maintain a pitch. Problem is, we're not going to get high enough, I don't think. I didn't uh, expect a Kerbal to end up at such a high orbit. One good side of this launcher is that the G-forces don't really get that high. Maximum thrust weight ratio is about 4.2. Okay, that's that. Set. And ignite. Uh, always worried with the AJ-10 if it's gonna throw me off, but... It's got a little bit of an issue with roll, but otherwise I think it's gimbling will be fine. Let's go to 5 degrees. Okay, well, well, we'll barely make it into orbit, I think, on this stage. Of course, we'd still have the delta V on the, on the 1 kN thruster, but that now is not uh, not enough thrust to keep us anywhere. That is just for orbital maneuvers. Certainly can't correct inclination right now. We're gonna have to have a much more robust system in order to try and rescue a Kerbal, I guess. So, okay, well, life support is not monitoring uh, the Kerbal, Orson Kerman. So hopefully, I've got my fingers crossed, uh, he's got some some form of supplies of his own that aren't going to deplete too quickly, because it might take us uh, might take us a while. Whoa, this is deviating a lot. Get back. Correct, please. Oh, that's a little bit more flagrant than I was. Okay, uh, Smart ASS is not doing what I want. Oh, no pi what? Uh, the guidance unit, guidance unit, hello? Oh, the guidance unit doesn't have SAS, okay. Um, that's interesting. So, hmm. Right, that's a bit of a problem. Okay, well, I'll try and stabilize it as best I can, but I, I don't have the best sort of thing going here. Then check the avionics pack. Uh, I should have known the avionics package doesn't have, uh, the SAS thing. So that's why Smart ASS also would have, I guess, obeyed that and not... Okay, I think we're, we're pretty much spin stabilized right now. Okay. I'll just leave it be for now. Okay, so we're sort of in this sort of orbit, but we're nowhere near our target in many, many respects. But at least we're in orbit. Uh, periapsis barely there. So maybe 
the trick of moving the avionics package down. Not like not the avionics package, the guidance package down. The heavy one was not such a good idea. But then keeping it up uh, at this stage would mean that this uh, might not have gotten into orbit. So yeah. All right. Well, anyway, this stage is expended. Let's just release it. Okay, RCS forward, right. Straddle down. Okay, I'll plot for a possible intercept of our target and see how that looks, but I don't think it's going to be doable. Okay, so I've got a, a plot that gets us to 1.8 kilometers. And that costs 752 meters per second. So that's 100 off. But then that doesn't include the delta V we need to get closer to him. And then also the deorbit delta V. So we're missing two components. That said, the HTP currently in the capsule could be reserved for the, those purposes. We could shut off uh, RCS and then use that to deorbit. So it could be, let, let's say we need at least 200 delta V more than what we've got right now. Okay, it didn't uh, disable it because I don't have connection. That's fine. But I'm pretty sure we don't want to try and, well, yeah, I don't think we can get close to our target like this. So let's do a re-entry test. So I'm going to go for 70 kilometers, which I think will bring us down safely. And there's a uh, higher apoapsis than I normally would be coming down at, so it'll be an okay test. Oh, I should have put one of the always open antennas on the pod. Forgot about that. Gonna have to dump the that tank. Ah, we ran out of HTP up here. That's not good. But presumably everything will be a-okay there, orientation-wise. We'll see. That's that's a good test also. So if we do run out of HTP, will the pod orient properly? We will find out. Now communication. We seem to be traveling with our satellites, so that's good. Okay, we've hit the atmosphere right overhead of our base. So, uh, orient retrograde, please. I think we have to dump the service module now, but I'm going to... Uh-oh. Spinning out of control. Retrograde. Just keep it there. I'm going to arm the parachute now. Okay, it is armed. Alright, well the capsule is going to have to orient itself. We're going to lose this thing. Alright. Let's see if that works out. This is a very costly capsule. I think it's like 3,000 funds, so it's like 30% of the total cost of the vehicle. So, wouldn't be too bad getting it back. I thought the ablative shielding would start working at 600. Oh, now, now it's starting to deplete. Looks like 800 was the number. Temperature's above 1,000. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, the, the antenna. That's fine. That's expected, actually. Okay. The G force is rising above six. Now at seven. We don't need much blade of shielding. I really think the blade of shielding needs to <laughs> needs to deplete faster than this. This is uh, this was underwhelming depletion of a blade of shielding. Uh, used to be that it melt away, and now we only lost about three units. 
Wow. Okay, so uh, possibly as high as 8 G's? Let's, let's just check. Uh, 7.6 G's. I guess that's okay for re-entry. Not the most comfortable situation, obviously, but... But I think uh, that'll that'll keep our crew safe. And of course this was a higher apoapsis than usual. Alright, now uh, automated deployment of parachutes, hopefully. But yeah, let's cut down on the blade of shielding. I think uh, we can get rid of, like, most of it. Um, we'll see. And that'll save mass. Maybe that'll help out. We'll see how much mass that saves. Okay. Shoot deployment. Excellent. Well, we definitely got heating. Uh, I mean, I'm thinking about the alternative heating model here and whether that should be used, but of course we had big disasters and some really serious questions about how that worked in earlier on in this series, so that's why that is not enabled, but um, yeah, I, I, heating worked fine. I mean, we, we saw the temperature go up beyond a thousand degrees Celsius, so that's that's right. No splash effect. I've got better buoyancy installed. I don't know. I would have liked to splash. Will it splash here? No. When it tips over? No. Okay, we got a little bit of science. Thanks to recovering the vehicle. We got almost uh, 3,000 funds back. Uh, mainly because we recovered so far away from the KSC. And so, yeah. But uh, not bad. Not bad. And I think we're ready to send a Kerbal up, even though we're not ready to rescue a Kerbal. So let's just make sure we've got a Kerbal space flight mission. Uh, yeah, I think it's time to send Jeb up. But we do have some tweaks to consider here. Now, with a Kerbal in, we don't need this avionics package. Let me just make sure the masses work out right. 5.9 is a bit hefty for just this. The command pod has a limit of 5. But then how much is the avionics package? Only 0.16. Hmm. So I sort of designed this a little bit beyond the limitations. But uh, let, let's see. Getting rid of uh, a blade of shielding. Let's say we cut that down to... Well, it doesn't weigh that. Well, it weighs a little bit. Let's see, how much does it weigh? 0.3 tons about? Let's say we need... Let's say 120 is more than enough. Actually... Well, it is Jeb. I don't want to kill Jeb. Let's let's keep it to... There we go. Let's leave it there. Um, Alright. We don't need as much... Oh, uh... Yeah. Maybe we should move this up. But yeah, we really don't need as much in terms of this module. Let's reduce the size of it in numerous dimensions. Okay, but that still has us above 5 tons. Well, let's get rid of this guidance module. So now we're like that. don't really want this antenna, we really want uh, the always active antennae. Okay. 5.4 tons though. So uh, this will be Vimes 2. We'll have to come up with some better way to go about things and I uh, guess Telemon 4 since I've got to now adjust this stage. Got a lot of Delta V. That is good. Oh, uh, 128 is now too much. Right, because we got 5 tons here and 125 ton capacity there. So we can't go 128. So we're going to have to shorten these up now. Alright, 125. Right on the nose. I haven't actually tried bringing out a vessel that is flagrantly above the limitations. I wonder what would happen in that case, I'm not too sure. 
but uh, we'll go with this and this will be the craft oh yes we wanted to tweak down the separation motors I hope we can do this in realism overhaul of course in general you can't tweak the thrust on things I have the darnest time trying to hit 50 on these it just doesn't like going to 50 so I end up going to 49 okay so double check that all of them are the same otherwise we have a disaster on our hands of course they've displaced the sepatrons again away from where I want them to be but we'll keep it that way okay all right here we go Kerbald Space Flight Jebediah Kerbin uh, all right here we go we're just gonna stick to this launch site in French Guiana for now since we still have that Kerbal to rescue and uh, I think that's something we need to focus on and also since we tested it from this location and judged our numbers from this location I think we should continue like this so throttle up SAS is on and we're about to go for Jeb's first flight is it really that mountain there? I mean hill okay um, yeah communication is not so much of an issue since we do have local control through Jeb poor Orson Kerman well that will be a priority for us but here we go let me make sure I don't accidentally roll this the wrong way and ready Jeb. They're shielding a little bit low, but we tried it out and that sh seemed to work out. Alright. take a long view so that my ears don't bleed. 30 seconds into flight, 2 kilometers in altitude. Trajectory nominal, all systems look nominal, even the delta V is reading properly right now. Forty-five seconds into flight, four thousand five hundred meters, two hundred and thirty-five meters per second. We're approaching the speed of sound, and we have passed Mach one. One minute into flight, 8,500 meters, 350 meters per second. Should be past max Q now. Let's just verify. Yes, we are. signs of heating whoa uh, what no whoa 
What the heck? Hey, wait a second. Command pod mark one burn up from overheating? No. No, 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 no. No. No, it couldn't have. No. I deny this. This is not possible. No. <laughs> Okay, uh, what? So now I have local control how exactly? This is so weird. If I actually press staging, it's gonna... So I can't revert because of my difficulty settings. I mean, obviously, I've got the guidance unit, but I don't have a... This is all messed up. Sure, why not? Uh... Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to... Well, I didn't quick save or anything, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, I might have a backup save. Let me check. My last backup was March 13th. I... I don't know. What? Why did it... Why? We tested it. The trajectory was not substantially different from the trajectory I tested it out on. I did have two antennae on that might have conducted heat that I didn't have on the first test. But there's there's no good reason for it to have had that problem this time. We've, we've had those antenna we had those antennae on the boiler plate for instance. So yeah. Oh so it seems like the pod was the only part to blow up. Even the parachute on the nose didn't blow up. We're talking about the parachutes here which always blow up if there's any heating. No other part was actually affected. Well, I certainly don't have the the ability to continue on at this point. I'll have to think over what to do about this. I will accept suggestions. Um, there's very little chance that we can do much except for plug on without Jeb. Uh, unless I just add him back into the persistent file manually. I mean, I can do that. I can just make him not killed. But then we've got another problem, where uh, we've got a system that we just tested suddenly failing without any explanation. And, you know, you might say my trajectory was a little bit different this time, that's fine, but there's no reason that only the pod would blow up. Alright, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that and take your comments and suggestions. And... Should we see what our... I don't know how far this thing is going to get. I don't... How much does it have left in it? I, I don't know if I'm selecting the... Here, we were, now we're on. Wow, it's still got 5,000 Delta V according to itself. Uh, that's interesting. Let's see where it ends up. And then I'll call it an episode. Can we control this at all? Well, that wasn't the best thing to do. Yeah, we can control it. That's weird. Uh, let's... Oh, that wasn't right. Uh, no, no. Prograde, prograde. Well, interesting guidance unit we've got here. Um... 
Let's give you some pitch, shall we? I mean, it's no good angling like that. You've got quite a... Give me... Okay. We can do that, apparently. We're not supposed to be able to control this right now, right? Or... Do I not need communication when I'm using these guidance units? Huh. Ah, not quite orbit. Well, too bad. Anyway, so uh, there we have it. That's the end of that. Please tell me we miss any land. Yeah, we're, we're gonna end up in the Indian Ocean. It'll be fine. Alright, so yes, I'll take your suggestions about what to do about this. But uh, that's it. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode such as it is, uh, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.